Hi, my name is Jennifer Quinn and I am a Rehabilitation Therapy Assistant here at the Animal Rehabilitation Center of Michigan. I am also Silver Certified in Low Stress Handling and a Certified Fit Paws Master Trainer. And this handsome man is Flyer and today we're going to teach you how to do passive range of motion exercises. First, let's discuss a couple of terms. Passive is a term used to describe something that is accepting or allowing of what happens. Range of motion, or ROM, is the full motion that a joint may be moved through. Therefore, when we say passive range of motion, or PROM, we are referring to exercises in which you move your pet's joints through their full range of motion yourself, as opposed to your pet moving the joint with his or her own muscles. If your pet is recovering from surgery or has a neurological disorder that prevents them from moving their limbs normally, there's a good chance your veterinary professional will recommend passive range of motion exercises. This is because these types of pets are a lot less active and this inactivity can cause a number of problems that inhibit the healing process and a full return to function. These problems include decreased circulation and mobility, weakened muscles, pain and stiffness, softened cartilage, and increased scar tissue formation. Passive range of motion exercises help combat these problems by keeping blood and joint fluid moving, maintaining muscle and joint flexibility, helping to maintain your pet's normal range of motion, and reducing discomfort until they have recovered enough to move on their own. Generally, it's safe to initiate a passive range of motion program at home shortly after your pet is discharged from surgery or neurology. So we'll start by laying our pet down on a comfortable surface. It may be handy to have some treats. Flyers demoing why treats are important right now. And we're going to lay them down. Sometimes a little bit of light massage or petting can help relax your pet. For those of you who know your anatomy out there, dogs are similar to us in that they have a hip, a stifle or a knee, and a hock or an ankle. So we're going to support the limb fully, taking care not to push or pull directly on the joints. We're supporting the limb in a level plane. And then we're just going to gently work the dog's limb through its normal range. So what I like to do is I like to picture a dog running in slow motion. So that way I'm sure that I'm hitting all of the ranges that the limb can move through. And this differs from stretching in that there's no stopping, starting, or holding. So we're just going very slow, very fluid through the entire ranges. We usually do 10 to 20 repetitions of this, but your doctor may recommend more or less depending on your pet's condition. And then we'd go ahead and reverse it just to be sure we get all ranges and all joints thoroughly worked. And we do the same number of repetitions going in reverse as we did going forward. And then after we finish that 10 to 20, we'll give a treat so Mr. Flyer wants to stay with us here. And then we're going to move right up to the forelimb, same thing. So they have a shoulder, an elbow, and a carpus or wrist. Again, keeping the limb in the same plane, not pushing or pulling on the joints. And we'll do our slow motion run. And this just works everything through the range of motion. The shoulder, the elbow, the wrist. So we do the same amount of times that we did on the back. And then we'd go ahead and reverse it. And then depending on your pet's individual injury or issue, your doctor might recommend just doing one limb or both limbs or all limbs. If you are doing all limbs when you are finished, you would just encourage your dog to get up with a treat, come lay down on the other side, and then repeat what we just did on the other two limbs. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this demonstration helpful. Remember to always keep your pet's comfort in mind and don't ask them to do anything that causes resistance or pain. If you're unsure or have any specific questions regarding your pet's individual needs, please contact their veterinarian, their surgeon or neurologist, or a certified canine rehabilitation practitioner. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.